not a time that a trade is so bad that it doesn't just set a team back for one or two years, but instead over 50. Legend has it that Lane said the Lions wouldn't win for 50 years, and the curse was born. When you look at certain NFL franchises that struggle for long periods of time, you can often trace it back to one ill-fated trade. Here are 10 all-time horrible NFL trades that ruined a franchise. Vikings give up the world for Herschel Walker. You know your NFL career didn't go as planned when your name is on the losing end of perhaps the most lopsided trade in league history. Georgia product and 1982 Heisman Trophy winner Herschel Walker was a budding star at running back for the Dallas Cowboys in the final years of the Tom Landry era. But with the Cowboys in rebuilding mode, Walker became expendable, and the NFC heavyweight Minnesota Vikings were convinced that he could help them get over the hump once and for all. During the 1989 season, Walker was traded to the Vikings in a three-way deal that also included the San Diego Chargers. The massive haul for Dallas included a trio of first-round picks and three second-rounders. With all that draft capital, Dallas wound up coming away with future all-time rushing leader Emmitt Smith, five-time Pro Bowl safety Darren Woodson, all-pro corner Kevin Smith, and standout defensive tackle Russell Maryland. All four of those men played instrumental roles in helping the Cowboys build a dynasty that won three Super Bowls in the 90s. Meanwhile, Walker lasted just three seasons in many and never once hit the 1,000 yard mark during his tenure there. The Vikings went one and done in the postseason after acquiring Walker, and they failed to even qualify for the playoffs in his two full seasons in many in 1990 and 91. So you do the math and tell us which franchise was ruined by this trade. Lions give away Bobby Lane to Steelers The Detroit Lions were once a model NFL organization. That was back in the 50s when they were led by Hall of Fame quarterback Bobby Lane. The six-time Pro Bowler led Motown to NFL championships in 1952, 53, and 57. Lions head coach Buddy Parker left to coach the Pittsburgh Steelers in 1957. A year later, Parker was able to land Lane in a blockbuster trade with Detroit. The NFL legend would continue to play at a high level for a few more years in Steel City, whereas the Lions have not been the same since this trade. Detroit has won literally one playoff game since trading away Lane, and that was back in the 1991 season. The Lions have, quite frankly, been one of America's saddest and most dysfunctional sporting franchises in the Super Bowl era. Maybe they should have kept Lane and looked to add to their dynasty. Little did the Lions know at the time that trading away Lane would set the stage for over six decades and counting of pain and misery. Colts draft, then trade, John Elway. The Baltimore Colts drafted Stanford signal caller John Elway with the top selection in 1983. But the two-way athlete had no desire to play for the losing franchise, and he even threatened to pursue a career in Major League Baseball. We had been in discussion before the draft that I was not going to play in Baltimore, that if that came to it, I was going to play baseball for the Yankees. The Colts had no choice but to trade Elway. We understand that. But of course, they could have gotten a better return for a future league MVP and two-time Super Bowl champion. Ultimately, the Colts dealt Elway to the Denver Broncos in exchange for backup QB Mark Herman, a 1984 first-round pick, and Pro Bowl offensive lineman Chris Hinton. Now, Hinton and Ron Soltz, the man Baltimore took with that 1984 first-rounder that they got from Denver, turned out to be studs on the O-line. The problem was that the Elway trade saw the Colts burn through so many valuable picks after that as they continued to search for a franchise quarterback. The team had to wait a decade and a half to finally find a true franchise QB, finally landing Peyton Manning with the top selection in 1998. Texans hand Cardinals DeAndre Hopkins for pennies Hopkins had five 1,000-yard seasons in Houston and helped them to four AFC South Division titles. In 2019, he and Deshaun Watson helped the Texans get to the AFC Divisional Round, where Bill O'Brien's disastrous play calling saw them below a 24-point lead to the Chiefs. The 51-31 loss was embarrassing, absolutely no doubt. But the Texans at least had one of the league's top QB wide receiver duos that would keep them in contention for years to come. Or so we thought. Apparently unhappy that Hopkins wanted a raise, O'Brien instead decided to trade the All-Pro wideout to the Arizona Cardinals in the 2020 offseason, along with a fourth rounder for past his prime running back David Johnson plus second and fourth round picks. The Texans completely collapsed from there. They won just four games in 2020, and it led to Watson requesting a trade. Franchise GOAT J.J. Watt was released in the ensuing offseason as the Texans began a scorched-earth rebuild. 
and Watson was traded to the Cleveland Browns in a 2022 blockbuster deal. Bill O'Brien made plenty of questionable calls during his time with the Texans, but this move will always be the worst, just because of how far it ended up setting this franchise back. Al Davis trades Coach Gruden to the Bucks. How about that? The coach trade makes the list. This is no Mickey Mouse coach trade, however. After going 8-8 in his first two seasons as the Oakland Raiders head coach, John Gruden proceeded to lead the team to back-to-back -to -back playoff appearances in 2000 and 2001. But after losing the tuck rule game to the Patriots in the divisional round, Al Davis decided to trade Gruden to Tampa Bay during the 2002 offseason. In exchange for the Bucks' first round picks in 2002 and 2003, their second round picks in 2002 and 2004, and $8 million in cash. Davis was looking for a more vertical pass attack than the one Gruden installed. And he was also unwilling to pay Chucky, whose contract was set to expire following the 2002 season. Initially, it looked like a great deal for the Raiders. Not only did they get an abundance of draft picks, but they also made it all the way to Super Bowl 37 with new head coach Bill Callahan. However, that's when the trade began to blow up in their face. First, they were humiliated by an overly prepared Gruden and his Tampa Bay Bucks in the Super Bowl, losing 48 to 21. After that, the Raiders would hit a downward spiral, failing to win more than five games in any of their following seven seasons. They've also made the playoffs just twice since that Super Bowl loss, and they haven't won a single playoff game. It's no wonder Al Davis spent all that money to bring Gruden back in 2018. Just a bit of a shame how that ended up turning out. The Ricky Williams Trade Ahead of the 1999 NFL Draft, then-New Orleans Saints head coach Mike Ditka badly wanted Texas Heisman Trophy winning running back Ricky Williams. How bad did Ditka want Williams? Well, so much so that he was willing to give up his entire load of draft picks and more just so the Saints could move up and take him fifth overall. New Orleans first, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and New Orleans first and third round picks in next year's draft. The New Orleans Saints are now on the clock. It was undoubtedly a giant win for Washington and a massive Massive L for Nola. Now, Williams did record a pair of 1,000-yard seasons with the Saints, but as a running back, he didn't move the needle much. Furthermore, the Saints traded him away to the Miami Dolphins after just three seasons. Washington, on the other hand, used their trade hall wisely, coming away with future Hall of Fame corner Champ Bailey and future Pro Bowl linebacker LeVar Arrington with the draft picks they acquired. The Saints franchise would remain in disarray for a while longer until Sean Payton and Drew Brees finally came along in 2006. If Ditka realized at the time how easy it was to find a 1,000-yard running back, he wouldn't have made that disastrous trade. And hey, who knows, maybe he would have remained the New Orleans coach even longer. They get Ricky Williams for less than some people might have imagined. Chris, they couldn't be more excited. Mike Ditka came in with a big cigar here today. I think he just lit it up. Packers go all in for John Hadle. With the Bart Starr era in the rearview mirror, the Cheeseheads were desperate for a new franchise quarterback. So the Packers sought AFL legend and Los Angeles Rams pro bowler John Hadle, who led the San Diego Chargers to an AFL championship in 1963. During the 1974 season, Green Bay acquired Hadle from the Rams in a mega deal that netted LA two firsts, two seconds, and a third round pick. Hadle turned out to be an awful fit in the Packers offense. He lasted just one and a half seasons there, going 7-12 as a starter with nine touchdowns against a whopping 29 interceptions. Green Bay only made the playoffs once, from 1974 to 92. So, yeah, that Hadel trade hurt them big time. Fortunately for Green Bay, they ended up being on the opposite side of another franchise-ruining trade, which helped them find their next great quarterback. The Packers steal Brett Favre from the Falcons. The Atlanta Falcons selected the gunslinger with the number 33 selection in the 1991 draft. Atlanta has selected Brett Favor, quarterback, Southern Mississippi. Favre, however, barely saw any playing time as a Falcon. He attempted only four pass attempts in his rookie year, and two of them went for picks. Mississippi, you're not going to play tonight? I tell you what, we got to have two plane wrecks. And four quarterbacks go down and you're it. In a surprise move, the Falcons quickly decided to give up on Favre and sent him to the Green Bay Packers for a first round pick in the upcoming 92 draft. That pick eventually led to Atlanta taking Southern Mississippi running back Tony Smith 19th overall. Smith lasted just three seasons in Atlanta and had 329 rushing yards and two touchdowns. 
All Favre did for Green Bay was turn them into an NFL juggernaut. They won back-to-back -back NFC title games in 1996 and 97, winning Super Bowl 31 over the New England Patriots. Favre was a three-time MVP winner who also retired as the NFL's all-time passing yards and passing touchdowns leader. Favre ended up taking Green Bay to the postseason 11 times in his 16 years there. Other than a fluke run to Super Bowl 33 in 1998, the Falcons were mostly an afterthought until Michael Vick turned them into a playoff contender in 2002. And as good as Vic and his successor Matt Ryan were in Atlanta, there is no telling how much better this football team could have been if they kept far. We wouldn't doubt at least one Super Bowl championship there, but perhaps even more. Buccaneers give away Joe Cool's successor to 49ers. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers drafted Steve Young with the top selection in the 1984 Supplemental Draft, which was made up of USFL and CFL players. Young's size, dual threat ability, and poise in the pocket made him a potential franchise changer for the sad Tampa Bay franchise. But Young struggled to get it going with a lackluster supporting cast, going 3-16 as the starter with 11 touchdowns and 21 picks over two seasons. 49ers head coach Bill Walsh, however, saw something special in Young. In 1987, the 49ers acquired the lefty for the low price of a second and fourth round pick. Because San Fran had Joe Montana at the time, the deal wasn't exactly noteworthy. Young was Montana's understudy for the 49ers 1988 and 89 Super Bowl championship teams. However, an elbow injury forced Montana to miss the entire 1991 season, thus opening the door for Young to start. Young had a superb 91 campaign and played well enough to retain the starting job over Montana and win the NFL MVP award. The 49ers dynasty was kept alive with Young's prolific play and he led the franchise to a Super Bowl 29 championship in the 1994 season. Montana would get traded to the Kansas City Chiefs in 1993 and he spent his final two seasons there. Oh, and the Buccaneers continued to be a mess for the remainder of the 80s and first half of the 90s until Hall of Fame coach Tony Dungy came aboard in 1996. Washington trades up for RG3. Washington was desperate for one of the two elite quarterback prospects in the 2012 draft. Stanford's Andrew Luck and Baylor's Robert Griffin III. Before the draft, Washington acquired the number two pick from the St. Louis Rams in exchange for three first rounders and a 2012 second round pick. After the Indianapolis Colts took luck first overall, Washington happily settled on RG3. Griffin had an electrifying rookie season, leading Washington to an unexpected NFC East division crown while earning himself Offensive Rookie of the Year honors. Unfortunately, a plethora of injuries quickly began to derail Griffin's career. Though, you should direct all the blame towards Dan Snyder and the dysfunctional coaching staff that had RG3 play through a brutal knee injury that only made matters worse. Washington showed zero regard for RG3 3's health and well-being, which ultimately resulted in the franchise being set way back by this blockbuster deal. But which other horrible NFL trades ruined a franchise? Join us in the comments section below. If you liked this video and learned a thing or two, clicking the like button helps out a ton. And hey, we appreciate it. If this is your first time coming around to TPS though, subscribing is a great idea, because we put out videos like this every single day. But as always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.